In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Christ is risen. Alleluia. And he has overcome death. It's Easter Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Siamé, a selection of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Monday, the 15th of May, 2023, sixth week of Easter, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Barbara Kaira celebrating her 50 plus 1 birthday from Mandola, Zambia, text for us the first reading. Susan Munyori celebrating her birthday today from Maputo, Mozambique, text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Deacon Moses Henry Hariho from Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. The Lord opened her heart to listen to what was said by Paul. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 16, verses 11 to 15. Setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philip, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to listen to what was said by Paul, and when she was baptized with her household, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 149, verse 1bc to 2, 3 to 4, 5 to 6a, and 9bc. The response is taken from Psalm 149, verse 4a. And the response is, The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's children exalt in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory and rejoice as they take their rest. Let the praise of God be in their mouths. This is an honor 
for all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. 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 The gospel acclamation is taken from John chapter 15, verse 26b and 27a. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The spirit of truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord, and you also are witnesses. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The spirit of truth will bear witness to me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 15 from verse 26 to chapter 16 verse 4a. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the counselor comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also are witnesses, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all this to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues, Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God, and they will do this because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with the first reading of today. We continue from where we ended on Saturday. It is Paul's second missionary journey. And this second missionary journey leads him to Europe. So listen, those of you in Europe, we are just evangelized to just like any one of us. And so you were also pagans like anybody else. Paul reached to you through Lydia. Mm -hmm. Through a woman. A woman has a big role to play in evangelization. And Paul was a very tactical man. I have spoken about Paul a number of times and how he used the prevailing culture to evangelize. Lydia was a wealthy woman selling purple goods. Purple stands for luxury. So she was selling luxurious stuff. And she was a woman of certain standing. So to get a woman of certain standing into Christianity meant elevating Christianity to a level that would be accepted by Greeks who honored nobility. He used that as a method of evangelization. Oh my word, this man was clever. He got Lydia. And Lydia took care of Paul and the team for a few days there in Philippi. He established a community there through Lydia. That was the first community in Europe. 
And it was from that community in Europe that Christianity spread throughout Europe. Though Europe slowly is embracing secular values. And I suppose Lydia who worked so hard to make sure that there was faith in Europe must be rolling wherever she is in heaven and feeling bad that a lot of people have disregarded their own faith have somehow sidelined the principles of Christianity that have governed Europe, that have built Europe. Europe is built on Christian principles from the first century. And this has to be understood. We have to understand that Europe is able to boast about values because there was a Lydia somewhere. And that Lydia must be respected in the way we conduct ourselves, in the way we preserve Christian principles. Let us not just do things in the name of accommodating others and forgetting about the principles that have built us to this day. The spirit of truth that Christ promises is supposed to help us remain witnesses. He says, and he will bear witness to me, and you also are witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. You are witnesses as well. Since you have received the spirit of truth, that spirit of truth should make you witnesses in the way you live your own life, in the way you show your convictions. People must know you are witnessing to Christ. It does not forget that. Some of us are afraid to state clearly what we stand for. Because we don't want to lose our jobs, because we don't want to lose a name, because we want to get money, and in the end we lose our own Christian principles. Let us be proud of what we believe in. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Monday to you. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.